I have noticed, since learning I'm a she-wolf, that I have quite a bit more stamina and even more speed than I used to. I am grateful for it as I see the gas station come into view at the edge of Cedar. I head inside and by water before heading the rest of the way into town. I will show these boys I can handle myself without them. It didn't take me long to get from the top of Cedar to the First Avenue, Tim Hortons. Before leaving the mansion, I had thought better than to try and take my car. I knew Chris had the keys to it, but I know how to hotwire it. The problem is it would have been too loud, and I would have been caught. As I enter Tim's, my phone goes off. I pull it from my pocket and see Alexis's name on the screen. She is most likely, but I don't care. I need some freedom, and if I had to sneak out for it, so be it. Alexis can send Jackson to find me as long as I don't have to spend another day with Chris. I'm okay with that. My phone goes off again, and I see Dimitri's name. They clearly figured out I'm not in my bedroom. I head into the Tim Hortons on First Avenue in Mission, B.C., the place I was born and raised. I've traveled outside of the Fraser Valley, and even the province and country, but Mission has always been my home, and the home to my pack. I park my car in the lot, and as I get out, my wolf hears a commotion. Following him, I head up to Second and into the trail in just beyond the public library. Three rugged men are standing over a scrawny-looking kid. One of them is kicking the kid while the other two are laughing and name-calling. My wolf snarls within me, and before I know it, the one doing the kicking is flying into a tree while the other two scram down the trail. The kid on the ground has his arms wrapped over his head to protect it. My nostrils pick up a particular scent, and I realize this is a shifter. Not only that, my wolf is whining. Fuck me. I can't have this happen right now. I just can't. I lean down 